okay previously we saw how to build a rasa bot like how to install rasa and how to build a rasa bots and we even checked out few basic terminologies and the files which are present in the rasa bot so uh, this thing structure and now we'll be looking at some uh, new concepts like few concepts of rasa uh, the most important thing we'll be looking at right now is entity and slots. So first, let me just tell you what is a slot. A slot uh, is kind of a memory location where you can store your data uh, for a longer period of time. To uh, like, we can store data which can be used uh, later in the conversation. Suppose. Uh, Suppose we have a con uh, conversation with the bot in which the bot asks you your name. Then we can store your name in the uh, slot and that slot uh, will be, we can access it later and use whenever we need later in that conversation. So basically, so slots are used to store data for a longer period of time. And one more thing we have is an entity. Entities are like, I can explain with an example. Uh, suppose uh, we have a sentence. Uh, we have an entity called city. And we have a sentence, we have a conversation with the bot saying, bot will ask you, uh, which city uh, do you live in? Then the user will respond with, I live in New York City. So in this, if we specify the entity uh, in this, the city New York, can be classified as an entity. And for that, uh, we can extract entities uh, using, like in, in Rasa, we can extract entities by providing the training data to the Rasa NLU. And then those entities can be stored into slots for further use. Let's see how to do it. First thing we need to do is uh, we'll look into entities. First thing we'll, uh, we need to do is define the entities in our domain file. Define the entities and define the slots and define the responses in our domain file. So first and foremost, what we'll do is define an entity called number. We'll be taking our user's phone number as input. So we'll define an entity uh, in the domain file called numbers. And for that entity, will provide training data in our nlu.yaml file. So I've created a new intent for called phone. And in this intent, I have uh, given some examples for my entity number. So while we provide the data, this is the format uh, where we can specify like uh, the entities. Uh, the In square brackets, we have to give the value and in uh, in the normal brackets, we have to uh, give the entity name. So here we have a dummy number and a name of the entity, that is number. So here we have few more sentences. This is my phone number. And here we here you go. I'll add one more. Like say, my phone number is, then in square brackets, we have to provide the data. I'll just give a dummy number. And then in the brackets, we have to specify the entity name. You can give as many training examples as you want. Just make sure you follow the naming convention, like in the square brackets data, then the name of the entity. OK, so we have provided data for our entity number for for this we had created a new intent called phone oh, so whenever user enters a number the intent phone will get triggered and the entity number will be will get extracted so uh, we need to also define this intent in our domain file which i have done here phone with this intent i have defined one more intent that is repeat phone and I'll, I have even given provided training data in my NLU file for the intent repeat phone. For this intent, I basically created to repeat the phone number. Suppose, uh, just to show you, 
uh, that the data is actually getting stored and we can access it later. Later, whenever uh, the bot asks the user uh, to provide the phone number, the user will give the phone number, and this phone number uh, is extracted. This phone number is extracted as an entity number from the whole sentence. Then it will be stored into slots, and later we can access it. Whenever, like, uh, whenever I say what is my phone number or repeat my phone number, then the bot will respond with the phone number that it has stored. I can add one more example here for that. Um, I'll just say my phone number is. If I say any of these sentences, the bot will respond with my phone number. OK, so uh, that was the part of entities. Now this entity will be stored into slots so that later whenever I ask for my phone number or whenever I ask the bot to repeat my phone number, it so it can repeat my number. So we should store it in the slots. Now coming back to our domain file, here we have defined a slot. And the slot name is phone. So this is the uh, format in which we define the slots the slot name then we have to define the slot type here we have defined the slot type as text uh, you have uh, different types for slots like text then we have boolean then we have any right now we'll be using text then uh, influence conversation true uh, whenever you set influence conversation true uh, i can uh, explain like for example uh, the user star if the user starts the conversation like whenever uh, the user might not say I always say hi hello the user might directly start like say tell the bot that hey bot this is my phone number one two three four five six seven eight nine in that case scenario if you have said this influence conversation true then uh, the slot will be extracted from that entity if you have not said the influence conversation as true then the bot won't extract the entity from there. So that is the thing. Then we have the mappings here, slot mappings. For this slot, that is phone mappings, we have set the type as from entity and we have provided the entity name as number. This basically means that we'll be extracting this slot using entity and uh, that entity will be number. So whenever uh, the bot encounters or extracts the entity number, it will store that number into the slot phone. So mapping, that's why we have put the mapping as from entity and we have uh, entity name as number. You can put the mapping as from text as well. Uh, in different case scenarios, we use different things. But right now we are using uh, entity to extract it. So we have used it as from entity this is uh, like the most used thing because it gives a it gives us the exact data that we want if you are using text then it might store the whole text that the user is inputting so this is a very effective manner to extract slots using entities okay so the this is how we define the slots the slots will be extracted using entities OK, now we have to even define the responses. Responses in the sense uh, what the how the bot will ask for that slot. So for that, uh, we have. And we have defined utterances. Uh, as you can see, uh, as the last time I had told, the naming convention goes with utter and the action name. So for slots, similar thing we follow, like utter, then we Right, ask and then the slot name. Slot name is phone. So utter ask phone. If we had a different slot, suppose if we had a slot city, then a response name would be utter ask city. Then uh, we define the text. What should come after that? So whenever the user wants to ask, whenever the bot wants to ask the user his phone number, the bot will prompt this address. That is, can I get your phone number, please? So that is how we define the slots and 
entities. So, okay, so we have defined the slots, we have provided the uh, training data as well. Now, either we can write the we can write a rule to extract those uh, extract the slots and entities or uh, the other thing that we can do is write stories stories is a very uh, like convenient way and uh, it is very flexible so most people most of the people use stories so i have just written a story here like a happy path so whenever user says hi, hello, or good morning, anything, intent greet will be triggered. So once whenever intent greet is triggered, the next action to perform will be utter ask phone. That is um, asking for the slot phone number. So whenever utter ask phone action is performed, whenever the address, uh, whenever the bot enters, that can I get your phone number, then the user will enter his phone number. Whenever your user enters his phone number, the intent phone will be triggered. Once the intent phone, will, the phone is triggered, then uh, it will extract the entity number. We have given an example for that. And then the slot will be set. Slot, that is phone, Will be set to a number that will be extracted from using entity so once the slot is set then uh, we perform an action that is action save phone this action uh, we have defined in our custom actions actions.py file here we will go to it now so this action basically checks where the slot is empty if the slot is empty it will say that uh, sorry i don't know your number if the user has entered uh, his number, then it will just prompt the phone number. So uh, before you using this uh, story in our stories, we need to even define this action in our domain file. So here I have done it in our domain file. As you can see at the bottom of the file, I have defined actions and in that actions I have Return the action name, action say phone. This will just prompt the phone number. So in the stories, whenever the slot is set, whenever the entity number is extracted and the slot phone number is and it is stored in the slot phone number, this action will be called. That is action say phone. Now coming back to the actions.py file. In this file, we have defined the custom action. In this file, we have defined the custom action to repeat the phone number. So the class name is action say phone and it is type of type action. And here we have defined the name. So whenever uh, action say phone is called, this part of the code will get executed. So what it does is, Basically, it will first use the tracker to get the slot phone from the bot. So, and this slot phone, the value of the slot phone is stored in the variable phone. Then in the next statement, it will check if not phone, if the variable phone is empty, then it will just dispatch a message to the bot, text message to the bot saying, sorry, I do not know your phone number. If there is a value in the slot, then it will dispatch a message to the bot saying your phone number is and it will prompt the phone. OK, so one more thing we need to take a note of is whenever we are using uh, entities or slots, we need to define some pipelines we need to use some pipelines so that the bot can extract entities for that the most important thing is our diet classifier if we have the diet classifier you can uh, the if you have uh, like used the diet classifier pipeline then it's sufficient to extract basic entities from uh, from a sentence so just make sure you have added necessary pipelines according to your needs and yeah, that's it. Then we can just train the model before testing it. Oh, sorry. 
for train the model, the command is Rasta train. This will train the model. This will train the model for all the components that we have used in our config.yaml file on different uh, for different pipelines. It will take some time. Yeah, till this thing gets trained. Uh, let me just tell you one thing. Uh, yeah. So uh, as I had said earlier, for actions, uh, whenever we are using custom actions, we need to run the action server separately from the Rasa server. So right now, uh, once this, uh, once our model gets trained, then we need to start a first. We need to start a Rasa server on the terminal. Then we need to open a new terminal, and in that terminal, we need to start our action server and that action server will run on the port 5055 and to make sure that our action server is connected to our rasa bot we need to check whether we have added the action endpoint in our endpoints.yaml file that is here action endpoint and we have to specify the url for the action endpoint Right now we'll be running it on localhost, so localhost, and it will be running on port five zero five five. So localhost port five zero five five. So once you have checked all the configurations and everything, and your model is trained, we can start the Rasa server. We'll interact with the Rasa bot on the command line itself. So we'll use the Rasa shell. Rasa shell. Our Rasa server is starting on port 5005 and it is loading the model which we just trained. As I said, the, all the models that we train get stored here in our models folder. And as you can see, we have so many models trained. And it will start the latest model that we trained, that is this because we didn't specify any specific model. So it is by default, it will take the latest model that is trained. By the time our Rasa server gets started, we'll just open up a new terminal and start an action server. We have opened a new terminal. Please make sure that your virtual environment is activated even in the new terminal. If by default it doesn't get activated, then you can activate it using uh, the activate command from uh, from the directory where you have created your virtual environment okay so i've opened up a new terminal with my virtual environment activated so to run the Ra rasa action server you can give the command rasa run actions this will run the action server just normally if you want to see the logs as well if you want to enable the debug option then you can give the command rasa run actions and you can give the comments like to debug this basically helps you understand more if you encounter any errors or any blockers so we'll be using this and this also helps you to know when the action uh, is triggered or executed let me just run it okay so our action endpoint server is started uh, and action endpoint is up and running on the port 5055 which we specified here in our endpoints let's go back to our rasa server rasa server okay the bot is loaded now we can have a conversation with the bot. Suppose I say hello, the bot should ask me my phone number. Okay, so can I get your phone number, please? Yeah, sure. So I'll enter dummy number. So once I enter a number, it should extract the number and store it as a slot. And yes, your phone number is 
blah 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 blah. So let's just see if our action got triggered. Yes. Uh, so as you can see, received request to run action C4 and finished running action C4. It got a request to run the action and it executed successfully. So uh, yeah, so that is how an entity is extracted and stored in a slot. To understand this in a more better way, we'll just run the bot once again, but this time we'll be using the Rasa interactive command to talk with the bot. This command basically helps us to uh, control the conversation of the bot. And uh, we can even use the command, we use this Rasa interactive command to train the bot and create stories from the command line itself. But right now we'll just use it to visualize the entity extraction and the slot storing. It is loading a model. Let's just check if our Asa action server is still running. Yeah, it's running. This usually takes a lot of time. Okay, let's just give it some time. By the time this uh, gets loaded, let's restart our action server. Okay, so our action endpoint is up and running. Let's go back to our action server, Rasa server, and see if it has started. Not yet. Okay, Rasa server is up and running. Okay, so our Rasa server is started. Let's just say hello. Okay, so as you can see, your NLU model classified hello with intent green. So uh, NLU, Rasa NLU has classified uh, input hello as the intent green. And it also says that there are no entities. So, oh yeah, there were no entities in it. It's right. Is this correct? If we can see yes. Okay, so as you can see, next next action the bot wants to run is action. Right now the bot uh, had run action listen when we, we give the input hello. After the action listen, we give the input hello and the bot classified the input hello as intent greet with confidence one. And right now current slots we have is phone which doesn't have any value right now. Okay, uh, the bot wants to run utter ask phone. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so once we say, uh, once we let the code know that uh, the utter ask phone is correct. It will run the utter ask phone with confidence one. So here is our utter ask phone. Can I get your phone number, please? As you can see, our current slots, still the phone number is none because we have not entered the phone number and the bot wants to run action listen now. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so now we have to enter a phone number. Can I get your phone number, please? Let me just enter a dummy number. Um, okay, now, as you can see, is the intent phone correct? 
yeah the intent was own as we defined in a NLU and in this intent the bot is classifying the bot is classifying this number as an entity number yes that is correct and it is asking us are all the entities labeled correctly we can say yes okay so as you can see till now uh and uh, whenever uh, it used to pop up our current slots the phone number slot phone slot was none but now after we entered the phone number the bot extracted the number as entity number and then it stored the number in the slot phone this is it and now you can see the slot phone has some value that we entered now the bot wants to run action save phone we can say yes so once the bot runs action save phone our action server should get a request to run the action save phone let's just check here yeah i received request to run action save phone and it was executed successfully we'll go back to our asa bot and see so here it is your phone number is zero one for the uh, uh, so this was the number that we entered yes okay so that's it